class. Welcome back to Advantage. I'm Matt Fisher, your accounting professor. In today's video, we're going to go over bond discounts. So we're going to look at these bonds. Now, if you recall, bonds are uh, debt for companies or sometimes governments. They sell these bonds to investors in order to raise money, to raise capital, typically for um, expensive things that they need to purchase. Okay. These bonds typically sell for around $1,000 each. That's usually what we call the par value of the bond. Now, the bond can sell for exactly $1,000, but typically it's going to sell for either more or less. And we'll go into more detail why that happens a little bit later. But if it sells for more than its par value, more than the $1,000 in my example, then it's selling for a premium. If it sells for less than the $1,000, then it's selling for a discount. And that's the one we're gonna go over today in this class. We're also gonna do a video on premium right after this video. Now, before we go into the specifics on this discount, we need to define a few terms. We need to look at some different types of interest rates that are out there. First of all, the bond's gonna have what they call a contract rate. Unfortunately, sometimes we call it a contract rate, sometimes we call it the stated rate, sometimes it's called the coupon rate. They're all the same thing, all right? So just be aware of that when you're looking at your textbook. It might call it something different. We're going to try and call it mainly the contract rate in this video. All right, now in our example, this contract rate is going to be 6%. There's also the market rate. The market rate is the actual interest rate that the investor is earning on this investment. So let's look at our example. Let's assume that we have $100,000 worth of bonds that this company wants to sell. And the par value of these bonds is gonna be $1,000. And the contract rate on these bonds is going to be 6%, while the market rate right now is 8%. So let's, take, let's think about this. If the contract rate, if it's going to be paying cash out at 6%, but the actual market rate is 8%, why would anyone want to pay $1,000 for these bonds? If they can go out to the market right now and purchase a similar bond and earn 8%, why would they purchase this company's bonds for 6%? Well, obviously they wouldn't. So that's why this bond needs to sell for a discount. See, by reducing the price of this bond, what they're in effect doing is the investor will then earn 8% on this bond. And in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how do we calculate this using the effective interest rate. There's also the straight line method, but we're going to use in this video the effective interest rate. It's a little bit harder. All right. So let's go through this example now using the effective interest method. Now, let me throw one more thing in there. Let's say that they're going to pay this interest out semi-annually. So they're not going to pay it every year. They're going to pay it every six months. So twice a year, semi-annually. So what we need to do is we need to look at this timeline that we have here at the side. And this timeline shows how the cash payments are going to look over the four periods. Now, this bond is just a two-year bond. So you can see here in this timeline, there are four periods because they're gonna be paying out the cash for the interest every six months. So if the bond is a two-year bond, there's four periods in this though, all right? So you can see there, the contract rate is 6%. So we can take 6% times the $100,000 bond and we'll get $6,000, but that's for a full year. For six months, it's only gonna be 3,000. So that's why you see the 3,000 there four times. And at the end of the bond's life, after the two years, the four periods or two years, they're gonna pay back the $100,000, okay? So that's our total cash flow associated with this bond. Now what we need to do is we need to bring all these cash flows back to the present, back to year zero. But what we wanna know is what is this cash flow worth today? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna discount this back to the present, and we're gonna use the tables to do this. Now, these tables are typically in the back of your textbook or somewhere in an appendix or the back of the chapter, and almost all textbooks have these tables, just to make it easier for students to calculate these. But you can also do this using a calculator or even Excel. But let me warn you, if you're using a calculator or Excel, 
your answers are going to be more accurate because there's not rounding involved. Whereas using the tables, the, the factors that are in these tables that you'll just see in, that you'll see in just a minute, those factors are rounded. So the, the answers are going to be just slightly off because of that. All right, let's take a look at this now. Let's discount the hundred thousand back to the present. So what we do is we need to go to the present value of a dollar, a single dollar amount table. All right, in my example, this is table one, which you can see here on your screen. And it's just a portion of the table, but you can see here that I go down at for four periods because the $100,000 is out four periods on our timeline. And then we go down at 4%. That's the market rate, okay? Remember the market rate was 8%, but they're paying it out semi-annually. So we have to cut that interest rate in half from 8% down to 4%. So the factor then is 0.8548 times $100,000. Okay, so that gets us a value of $85,480. So that's what our bond value is worth in today's dollars. Now what we need to do is we need to discount the $3,000 back to the present also. So we're gonna to have to go back to the table, but in this case, in my example, it's table two, your, your textbook might be slightly different, so just be careful about that. I'm looking at my table, which is table two, which is the present value of an annuity, because the $3,000 is taking place every six months, okay? So it's the same dollar amount, $3,000, and the time periods are equal. They're six months apart. So that's what an annuity is. Same dollar amount, equal time periods apart. So I go to this table two and I go at once again, 4%, go down 4%, go across at four periods because the annuity is for four periods. And I'm going to get a value of 3.6299, right? That's the value on this table. I'm gonna multiply that by the $3,000 and that will get me $10,890. So that's the value of this annuity today, all right? So now I can add these two numbers together, my 85,480 plus the 10,890, and that will get me the value of the bond. The bond's value then in today's dollars is $96,370. That's what it's worth at a market rate of 8%. It's paying out at 6%, but the market rate's 8%. So what we've done is we've discounted it and shown, okay, we're gonna sell it for less than the par value, which is 100,000, we're gonna sell it at a discount, $96,370. So now let's take a look at the journal entry to record this. On the sale of these bonds, if we sold all of the bonds and we got the $96,370, we would debit cash $96,370. We will credit, let's move over, let's skip down a little bit. We'll credit bonds payable 100,000 because the bonds are $100,000 bonds. So at the end, we have to pay back 100,000. So that's why we're going to then credit this liability 100,000. And then the difference between the cash and the liability of 100,000, 100,000 is $3,630. That's what we call the discount on bond payable. And on your financial statements, if you look at the balance sheet, that is a, an account that goes with the bond payable. So the bond payable will show 100,000 in our liability section, and then it'll be less the discount on bond payable, 3,630. So people would know that the bond sold for a discount. Now, let's take a look at this amortization table. Now, you can see in this amortization table, it's got the bond value on the far right-hand side of $96,370. Okay, that's the value of the bond right now. For the first payment, we're gonna pay out cash of $3,000, because remember, it's the contract rate, 6,000 times the 100,000, bond value, which gets us 6,000, but it's just for, for six months. So then it's, we have to cut that in half to $3,000. But the real interest expense is calculated using the market rate. Remember the market rate is only 4% every six months. 
So you're gonna take that 4% and multiply it by the bond value right now. The bond value right now is $96,370. So $96,370 times the 4% will get us the $3,855. So now you can see the difference between the cash payment and the actual interest expense. The difference between those is $855. That's the amortization for our discount, okay? That discount on the bonds payable. Let's take a look at the journal entry right now. The journal entry at the end of the first six months would be a debit to interest expense for the amount we just calculated, the $3,855. That's our interest expense. But the cash we're actually gonna pay out for this business is only $3,000. So you can see the cash amount is a credit for 3,000. The difference is the discount on the bonds payable for $855. Okay, this is a little bit tricky. You need to go through this a few times, right? It's not gonna come the very first time you look at this. You really need to pay attention to this and go through these examples several times. So anyway, the discount then is $855. That would be our journal entry. Let's go back to the table now. And in this table, this amortization table, you can see that what the discount is in the first year right there. And you can see that now our discount, which was 3,630, is now only 2,775 because we basically kind of used up $855 of that discount. Now, I'm not gonna go through all the journal entries, but you can see in period two how that would be calculated. You can see in period three how that would be calculated and in period four. And in period four, you can see that we will use up that entire discount, which is what we want because then we need to pay off that bond. The very last journal entry for interest is there on your screen. And then also the last journal entry for when they pay off these bonds, you can see right there, they're going to credit bond payable for $100,000 because the discount is completely gone. And then they're going to credit cash because they'll pay off the bonds. Let me point out with this amortization table, there might be some slight rounding because we used the tables in order to calculate that. And we didn't use the calculator or uh, Excel to calculate uh, these dollar amounts earlier. All right, class. I hope this video has been helpful to you. Please subscribe to our channel. And in the next video, we're gonna go over a bond premium. So we're gonna go through all this again, but with an example of a premium instead of a discount.